I've taught them well, Mr. President. Oh, sorry about that. Not some, not everyone. Sorry about that. Mr. President, it is with immense pride that I'd like to inform this House that we are launching the Parliamentary Friends of Dementia Group today, just after one o'clock here at Parliament House. There are about 11,800 Tasmanians living with dementia, and this number is anticipated to increase to more than 20,000 by 2050, as the percentage of older Tasmanians in the population increases. In Australia, generally, that figure is expected to reach 900,000 by 2050. Mr. President, in Australia, more than 25,000 people also suffer from younger onset dementia, some as young as 30 years. Dementia is the third leading cause of all deaths. And it's estimated that only one in five Australians are actually aware that the disease is indeed terminal. Keynote speakers at today's launch are the Minister for Health, the Honourable Jeremy Rockliffe, the Shadow Minister for Health, Anita Dow, and the Health Spokesperson for the Greens, Dr. Rosalie Woodroff. I'm also very much looking forward to hearing from the fabulous representatives of Dementia Australia, Dementia Friendly Tasmania, and the University of Tasmania's world-leading Wicking Dementia Research and Education Centre. Mr. President, you may wonder why I'm so interested in dementia and why establishing a parliamentary friend group matters in that context. The reason is simple. It's about stigma. Facing stigma is often a primary concern of people living with dementia, their family and carers. Those with the disease report being misunderstood because of the myths and misconceptions others have about dementia. And the consequences are indeed enormous. <clears throat> Stigma is the use of negative labels to identify a person with a disability or illness. Stigma around dementia exists in part due to the lack of public awareness and understanding of the disease. And stigma prevents people from seeking medical treatment when symptoms are present, from receiving an early diagnosis or any diagnosis at all, from living the best quality of life possible while they are able to do so from making plans for the future, from developing support systems, and from participating in necessary clinical trials. Yes, stigma can be overcome. I'm saying that because as a society, we as human beings have done this before. We have overcome the stigma of cancer. Decades ago, being diagnosed with cancer was considered a death sentence. Death sentence. One would not talk about having tests, let alone being diagnosed. But today we have systemic screening programs in place and well as, you know, as well as comprehensive suite of individualized treatment options. Today we empower patients with cancer. We have overcome the stigma of mental health issues. A generation ago, patients with mental health issues found themselves institutionalized and disenfranchised from their community. Today, Mental health is a responsibility for all of us. When we are asking, are you okay? We're actively offering support to anybody. We don't discriminate. So in order to overcome the stigma of dementia, we as a community must aim to be open and direct, and we must be committed to communicating the facts. Sharing accurate information is key to dispelling misconceptions about the disease. So let's engage with others in discussions about dementia and the need for prevention, better treatment, and an eventual cure. Whether a pamphlet or a link to online content, offer information to help people better understand the disease and their options. Making our electoral offices dementia friendly is a logical first step here. So reaching out, making that first step can really make all the difference. Overcoming stigma by engaging, informing, and supporting. That's exactly the role I envisage for the Parliamentary Friends of Dementia Group. I'm looking forward to many honorable members of this House actively participating in the group over many years to come. As long as we don't forget to turn up. Well, I will remind you. <laughs>